In this video, I'm going to go over how I used Home Assistant in combination with smart devices to automate various features of my Japanese apartment, such as the AC and also the Kotatsu over here. So when I moved into my Japanese apartment, I realized very quickly that the AC is very bad. And what I mean by that is that there's no central heating in most Japanese apartments. You see, my Japanese apartment is a little different from others because I have two floors. But the air conditioning is only on the first floor, meaning that during the summer it's too hot upstairs and during the winter it's freezing. This air conditioner here does both heating and cooling, but as you can see, I always keep that door closed because it basically only keeps the kitchen and the living room air conditioned. That means that places like the toilet and the bathroom slash shower is freezing this winter. Up here on the second floor, we have this nice little nook where you could put like an office or something, but it's just usually uncomfortable to be up here outside the air conditioning. And also in the bedroom here, that you can see I do actually sleep in here, but I have to use that electric heater during the winter because it just gets way too cold. So in an attempt to alleviate some of the annoyances, I've made my air conditioner smart. So this is the AC remote that came with the apartment. Now you can see it's very basic and I don't even think it actually belongs to this unit. I think it's just a generic third party one. But you can see it has the cooling, heating, on off. You can change what temperature it's set to. And I believe these are timer buttons down here. The problem is I've never been able to get this timer to work. And I think it's because the remote has to be like pointed right at it throughout the night. So it basically doesn't work. And even the on and off feature can be kind of shoddy. See, if you're not pointed at it, it won't actually do anything. Oh, see there, it made a beep to turn it on. Now I want it to turn off, please turn off. Okay, there, you can see it finally turned off. So as you can see, it's a little frustrating because when you wake up in the morning and it's like 30 below out and your entire apartment is 30 below, it's nice to come downstairs to an actually like heated living space. So while browsing Amazon, I found this little device that basically acts exactly the same as the remote controller, except you can connect it to your smartphone through the internet. So what this little device allows me to do is basically pretend this is the remote control and send commands to the AC from my phone or via timer or via some smart feature, anything really. And it just adds so much more flexibility and convenience. On top of that, I also purchased two little smart switches and they're also super nice to have during the winter. For example, I have one plugged into my Kotatsu over here. So here's my Kotatsu control and basically I, I always leave it switched on, but then this little white brick here is actually a smart switch. And there's even a little button here, so if I want, I can just come over and press with my foot, and that'll turn on the Kotatsu, as you can see with the red light there. Now, I could have used the two separate apps, the one for the smart switch and then the one for the IR blaster, but I wanted something in a centralized space so I could just open an app and hit buttons on my phone and it would just work perfectly. And to do that, I purchased this little Raspberry Pi here that is running Home Assistant. And Home Assistant is basically like an operating system that can connect all of your devices, this IR blaster and that smart switch over there to one central device that you can control with an app on your phone. So as you can see here on my phone, I have the Home Assistant app. Now if I open that, now here you can see I have a dashboard that I customized with my AC on and off with a little status value here. Now the status value isn't super reliable. It basically just toggles when I hit these buttons because the switch is kind of a dumb switch as in it doesn't actually know if the AC is on or off. So I kind of have to like keep track of that myself. And you can see here, I also have this little AC automations toggle here. Now what this does is it basically turns on and off all the automations I've set up. For example, every day, this will turn on my AC around I think six in the morning and it's smart. So if it's a work day, it'll also turn it off at 7.45, which is when I should be leaving the house. Additionally, I also set up an automation to automatically turn off the Kotatsu if it's still on after midnight, just in case I forgot to turn it off, which happened a few times, which is just wasting energy. So to give you a quick demo here, I'm gonna hit the AC on button. And you can see that turns on the AC. It also toggles the value there, but that's more for my reference. 
And then if I come over here to the switch, turn the switch on, you can see there is a bit of a delay there. For some reason, I couldn't get, this is the SwitchBot smart switch. I couldn't get the local control working, so I'm routing it through their cloud. It's a little janky, but it still works. Now I did actually purchase two smart switches and because I didn't really have another use for it, I have it plugged into the toilet seat heater. So basically when I'm out for work, I have it turn off automatically. It saves like maybe 70 watts, you know? Um, it's a little silly, but it does, and then it turns back on automatically right before I get home. So technically I'm, I am saving energy. I did consider plugging the other smart switch into this electric heater just so I could like automatically turn it on when I'm getting ready for bed. But I didn't like how like shifty this thing is up here. It does have like a safety off switch on the bottom here, but it's pretty scary when it's turned on. So I figured I should just leave it like that. It is a little less convenient, but I think it's a lot safer. Now I will admit it takes a little bit of technical know-how to set this all up, but if you just purchase the IR blaster and use their proprietary app, you're gonna have no problem with it. After you get through the initial setup of figuring out what controls your AC unit, they include their own timers and you know you can just set up a button on a dashboard just like I have. So it's pretty reasonable. I think anybody could do it without much issue. But if you wanna integrate this specific IR blaster with something like Home Assistant, you'll have to program the remote manually by essentially typing in codes on Home Assistant to learn a command and then you'll have to point the remote at it to actually learn it. And then you can go from there by assigning it to an automation. It gets a little hairy from there, but honestly, it's not that bad if you're willing to put in the time to Google everything. So that's about it for my like automation update for my apartment. Now you can do a lot more with Home Assistant. I've only really scratched the surface. For example, you can do present detection, which I tried out, but I found it was a little flaky and sometimes my AC would turn off while I'm at home, which is super inconvenient and is the opposite of a smart AC. So I have those features turned off, but you can do all sorts of things. For example, you can connect it up so your smart light will turn red when your phone is at 90% battery. Like really the only limit is your imagination and if the features actually work. So it is fun. And if you know, you're into this smart automation stuff, I highly recommend just buying a couple smart devices and playing around with it. So that's it for this video. If you'd like to support me more, you can subscribe to the channel, follow me on Patreon, or just leave a comment about what you wanna see in the future. So thanks for watching.